Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Tracy today and I welcome you to Life Changers Family Worship Christian Center, a place where lives are being changed one person at a time. Welcome to change. Welcome, welcome. Our virtual viewers, audience, family, friends, those of that in the house of the Lord with us today, let's stand to our feet as we give God glory, as we give God praise. Come on, but this is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made this day. Not man, amen, but the Lord. And because he's made it, it's good. It's good. So we honor God today for the privilege, amen, and the honor to come into his gates with thanksgiving and to enter his courts with praise. We ought to be thankful and bless his name. Hallelujah. We're going to go before the Lord with prayer this morning. We did. loving kindness. Would you anoint your manservant today that he would bring forth your word with clarity, power, and demonstration. You'll do the drawing. You're drawing the women off the street. You're drawing the gangbanger. You're drawing the drunkard. Hallelujah. As we lift you up, you're drawing right now the murderer. You're drawing the abuser. You're drawing them, God. You're drawing them. We lift your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a God. Hallelujah. You're our God. All powerful. All knowing. Omnipotent, you are great. You're everlasting to everlasting. So thank you for drawing the viewers, God. That someone that sees this, oh God, service today will be compelled, will be convicted, and then will be converted. Thank you for your saving power. You're still saving. To the utmost, Jesus, you're still saving. So thank you today for saving. Thank you, Lord, for lifting every burden. For those that may walk through the door today and those that may be watching, would you lift the burden? 
would you clear their mind that they may receive truth today father plow up god till up all those things that have been cemented in the hearts and minds of your people may your word fall today on good ground take root and bring forth a harvest to the glory and praise unto your name and these things we ask in jesus name thank god and amen hallelujah let's put our hands together as we celebrate and salute the king of king and lord of lords come on raise your praise today raise your praise today somebody didn't get up but you're here come on. somebody didn't make it but you're here somebody would love to trade places with you but you are here come on and raise your praise this morning he's worthy 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 hallelujah he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy He's worthy, he's worthy. Come on, hallelujah, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Have them on my show. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. You're wonderful. not the lifeline somebody's drifting away but today hallelujah we're throwing out the lifeline to you my son to you my daughter hallelujah you don't have to stay in the place that you've been the potter wants to put you back together again hallelujah you don't have to stay in the shape that you've been Day after day, day after day, the same thing, same results. You don't have to stay in that same place and shape. The potter, the potter, the master potter wants to put you back together again. Not with glue, not with tape, but put you back together again from inside out. And so we invite you today into this worship experience. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. Be willing today to allow him to do what no other power can do. And that's to put you back together again. Hallelujah. 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 And what he does, he does well. Ask me how I know. What he does, he does well. Thank you, Jesus. This is Communion Sunday, and we are preparing our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. The viewers at home, if you would participate with us, if you have bread or crackers, water or juice, it doesn't mind what you're using. We're going to pray amen and consecrate the elements. But this is part of our lifestyle as believers. He told us as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Hallelujah. And so we do it willfully, joyfully, because it reminds us of his sacrifice. So as they're preparing to distribute communion now here in the house, I will that you at home will give you some time to prepare and get communion. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy rob you of partaking of the Lord's communion. I'll be reading this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, amen. 
as the praise teams and the musicians play, amen. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. And the scripture reads on this wise. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together into condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So far the scripture. Hallelujah. As the word of the Lord proclaims, the same night in which he was betrayed, the same night in which he was betrayed, come to communion and partake of communion that doesn't mean that everything in your life is perfect it doesn't mean those that you may be partaking communion with have not wronged you or you wronged them but what it does mean is that you come bringing all of you to the table to remember what he did for you it's not about what anyone did to you or what you did to someone else it's about what he did for all of us and so communion is holy it's sacred it's a time where we come and we reflect and remember the ultimate sacrifice the price he paid for us but before we partake of communion we need to make sure that we examine ourselves you know where you are you know where you aren't you know what you've done and what you haven't done. There's no one here to put, a, put you in heaven or hell. But I would ask you that you take some time between you and the Father and go to him in prayer as we confess our sins. Father, we thank you for your word. It gives life. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing asunder to the marrow, the bone. This morning, God, we thank you now for your spirit of truth. Whatever we've done, you know each of us name by name. You know the numbers of hair in our head. And so we come and we confess, Lord, those things in areas of our life, Father, that have not met the standard in places we've missed the mark we ask that you would forgive us now in the mighty name of Jesus forgive us Lord for those things that we should have done that we didn't do forgive us of the things that we've done that we should not have done we just thank you now Lord because we have access to you 
and you're just and faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness and as far as the east is from the west you remember our sins no more thank you father god that you don't hold things against us but when we come to you you're willing to forgive so thank you right now god before we partake of your holy communion thank you for your forgiving power your grace that's sufficient your mercy that's new every day in jesus name thank god and amen hallelujah hallelujah come on it's a good place to praise him some people walk through their whole lives not being forgiving not forgiving themselves not giving extending forgiveness but we thank god today that he's not like man hallelujah come on he's not like man if we would just confess it if we would just confess it if we would just confess it he'll forgive you hallelujah and now these elements that we have about to partake of the bible says that he blessed it hallelujah give it thanks for it father we thank you right now for these elements these crackers and this juice we thank you that it represents your body and your blood but you take it from a natural use God and consecrate it for the spiritual use of communion to the glory honor and praise of your name in Jesus name amen hallelujah and the scripture says when he had Give it thanks, he break it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner of thanksgiving, he took the cup. And he said, this is the New Testament. This is the new covenant. This is the new agreement in my blood. As often as you drink it, you do in remembrance of me. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross for your remissions of sins. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of him. Hallelujah. 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 What can wash away my sins? Come on, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Come on, nothing. Come on, I said nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow. Come on, somebody. That makes me white as snow. No other help I know. Nothing, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together this morning and celebrate the blood, the body and the blood. The body and the blood. Come on, somebody. The body and the blood. For he was wounded for your transgressions. Come on, there was bruised for your iniquities. We thank God this morning for the body and the blood. Would you receive amen? Our sister Danae, as she comes, amen, at the praise portion of the service. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many know that we serve an everlasting God? Hallelujah. Come on, I said we serve an everlasting God. Okay, I know she said sit down, but can we stand up on our feet and reverence the king that we serve? Hallelujah. Come on, is anybody glad to be here? I don't hear y'all. Is anybody glad to be here? Anybody glad that he kept you another week? Hallelujah. He is my light. Hallelujah. Come on, can y'all just clap your hands like this? Come on, I don't see y'all. Come on, Dante. The Lord is my light, sound 
salvation Whom shall I feel? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light salvation Whom shall I feel? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Come on, anybody gonna wait on him? I will wait on you. I will trust. I will trust in you. I will trust. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, let's say that one more time. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, just like this. It's real easy. We set our hope on you. We set our hope 
on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are. Let me hear y'all say, we set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Can y'all help us say that? You are the everlasting God. You are the, we set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We're gonna do that again. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Last time, you are the. We set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Anybody believe that? I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, can y'all say that? I will remain, I will remain confident, confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Anybody gonna see his goodness? I will remain, I will remain confident in I will see the, come on, I want to hear y'all, the the Lord, lift it up, I will, I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord, we got any confident people in here, I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together if you believe that. We got any people who will remain confident that you'll see the goodness of the Lord. That means you'll remain confident, you'll have faith. Hallelujah. Anybody remaining confident, remaining steadfast, being unmovable, because you'll see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Anybody going to wait on him? Come on, it says, I will wait on you, God. I will wait on you, Jesus. I will wait on you, God. Hallelujah. While I'm waiting, I'm going to remain confident. Hallelujah. We put our hope on you, God. We set our hope on you because you are the everlasting God. Come on, does anybody believe that? Is anybody hope set on him? Is he the everlasting God? Hallelujah. Come on, keep those hands clapping.
hallelujah. As she was singing, amen, and we're talking about the everlasting God. Sometimes we sing songs, amen, and we don't really get the depth of what it's saying. But I begin to look up the word everlasting. And some synonyms for everlasting is eternal, endless, perpetual, undying, timeless, never-ending, deathless. He is the everlasting God. He cannot die. There's no end to him. Come on, he perpetually exists in time, outside of time. He's immortal, invincible. Come on, the only wise God. We set our hope on him today. From everlasting to everlasting. He is our God. Hallelujah. I'm excited to know flowers fade. People fade. Come on. Everything in this life has an expiration. Save God. So if you want to put your hope on something or put your hope in something, put it in the eternal, everlasting, timeless, infinite, immortal, perpetual, deathless God. That's a good praise to praise him. Come on, put your hope. Amen. The old songwriter, amen. And the old church is saying, amen. I build my hope on nothing less. Come on, then Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Come on, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Oh, oh, look at your neighbor and say, oh, of the ground. Is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking sand. Again, I'm before you this afternoon to let you know the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And because of that, you're easy to love. And pre-pandemic, amen, we would pass the peace and share the love. We would hug on and love on each other. This morning, just dap them up, amen, give them a shoulder bump, amen, let them know that Jesus is me. Come on, you can get out your seat, you ain't, you can still social distance. Come on and fist bump, amen, and shoulder bump. Let somebody know that Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, because of that, you're easy to love. You're easy to love. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Come on, I thank God for you, hallelujah. In of myself amen I couldn't do it but thank God the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you and because of that you're easy to love welcome to change amen welcome to change I have a few announcements for your hearing amen a few announcements for your hearing we praise God that every day Monday through Friday at 12 noon we are uh, the prayer line. We have a prayer line. We've been praying, amen, every weekday, Monday through Friday since March of last year with that pandemic hit, amen. And look at somebody and say, we're still going strong. We're still going strong. We're still going strong. Every day at noon, we meet God at our virtual altar, hallelujah, pulling down strongholds, decreeing and declaring what thus saith the Lord. Come on, igniting and invoking, hallelujah, the presence of the Lord. Lives have been changed. People have been healed. Souls have been saved. Would you join us every day on the prayer line, on the prayer line? Men ought to always pray and not faint. Hallelujah. Would you meet us on the prayer line? Amen. They'll have the information for you. Amen. Online every, every day. And on Saturdays, we meet at 8 a.m. The Bible declares that men ought to always pray and not faint. And if there's ever a time that we need to be going to God in prayer. It is now. Don't let up. Don't let up. Stay faithful to prayer. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we meet online as well for Bible study. We've been doing a series, a soul winning series. We are to be fishers of men, fishers of men. He commanded us to go ye therefore into all the nation. Hallelujah. And so we've been learning about what it means to be soul winners. So if you would meet us every Tuesday, again, the information is being made available on, on, on below. 
And if you will meet us every Tuesday for Bible study, we would love to have you where we journey through the word of God to find out what thus saith the Lord concerning you, 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 and especially you. We invite you to be a participant with us as we do Bible study every Tuesday. Next, month, next Sunday is Mother's Day. We're preparing, amen, to come before you with an awesome message about mothers. Would you meet us here the same time? and the same place on Mother's Day. This is the end of your announcements. I will that you would govern yourselves accordingly. We're going back into high worship at this time. Hallelujah. Come on, can anybody, can everybody stand up on their feet? Hallelujah. Did anybody come to praise the Lord today? Come on, I said, anybody come to praise the Lord today? Yeah. Hallelujah. He's worthy, is he not? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together just like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. We're going to have a praise party this morning. Is that all right? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Just like this. Repeat after me, though. His laborers in his 
find you declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, and the trumpets fall. Hallelujah. It's the year of Jubilee. 
Hallelujah. Salvation comes. Hallelujah. There's nobody like my God. There's nobody like Jehovah. Come on, there's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nobody greater, stronger, wiser. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, anybody know that he deserves all the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy today. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Jehovah, Yahweh, we bless your name. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Come on, keep those hands clapping as we receive our overseer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you believe that, I dare you to bless him right now. Oh, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Come on, come on, come on. This is a time when you bless him. There's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody higher than Jehovah. There's nobody greater than Jehovah. Hey, yes, yes, yes. I give you 30 seconds just to lift your hands, just to worship him. You are the Lord. You are the great I am. And we worship you. And we glorify you. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on, come on. There's nobody, 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 nobody. Well, some of y'all looking at me, but I dare you to throw your hands up and lift your hands to him and worship him. Oh, come on, you got 30 more seconds. There's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody like that. That's it, Ralph. There's nobody like Jehovah. I'm giving you a couple of more seconds. Taleb, there's nobody like Jehovah. Dom, there's nobody like Jehovah. Oh, 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 there's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. But I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. <laughs> nobody greater. <laughs> I wish I had some help. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on. I searched all over. <laughs> Couldn't find nobody. Search high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Raise up. Nobody greater. Oh, y'all watching me. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on, y'all need to talk back to me. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Where'd you search? Still couldn't find nobody. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. I need everybody to help us today. Nobody greater. Nobody, nobody greater. Come on. Nobody greater. Oh, oh. Nobody greater than you. Overseer Morrison, nobody greater than him. Come on, come on. Nobody greater, nobody. Nobody greater. Come on, come on. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Come on, come on, come on. One more time. Come on, come on. Nobody, everybody. Nobody greater. No music. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. 
Come on, say it. Come on, come on. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Come on, everybody. Nobody greater than you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Give God some glory. We'd be dangerous if we get on one accord. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We bring you greetings from Life Changers Family Worship Christian Center where God is changing lives one person at a time. Look at somebody, since we are still practicing social distancing, and wave at them and say, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. I know we're being safe, but I'm just glad to be in the number. Old folks used to say, I'm glad to be in the number one more time. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. But I'm here to be in God's service one more time. Can you give God praise just for life? Not the good stuff, just for life. Not the stuff that he did this week, just for life. Look at somebody next to you and say, what's wrong with your hands? What's wrong with your hands? You still got your hands looking like you can't clap them. If it had not been for the Lord this morning that woke you up, you ought to at least give him some praise for waking you up. You ought to at least go out your way and lift your voice that God made a way. All right, let me go ahead and teach because some of y'all just ain't in the mood for that. See? But if I had about three people, Sister Charlene, Sister Dancy, that understood that you're only alive because of God. Dom, I'll just talk to you. Hey, Ralph, you're only alive because of God. All right, I got all one of you. All right. And I'm going to move, but I really got to deal with this because some of y'all think like you doing God a favor. Do you not realize that you've probably been exposed to COVID at least a hundred times? You so worried about coming to church and getting it, but you stay in Walmart. I don't have no help. You don't been to the mall. Okay, come some of y'all just talk back. You don't been to the mall. You don't got your little stimulus. You don't spend all of that. Some of y'all don't got your income tax, and if you haven't, it's already been filled out. You praising God for that. You done been everywhere you needed to be. Come on, some of y'all, I done seen you in the park. I done seen you on Facebook. You done got on the plane. You don't trust what I tell you. You have been exposed to co this coronavirus at least a hundred times or more at Okay, uh, Facebook, they're quiet here. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but they're quiet here. See, the whole deal is you've been trying to be so protective, but this virus, it's so aggressive that you've messed up and touched the wrong thing. You've messed up and let somebody cough around you, and you've messed up and been in a large area with a large amount of people. Come on, stop acting like you ain't did it. You've been there. You just didn't put everything on Facebook, but you've been in these streets. Overseer Morrison, they've been in these streets. Shirella, we've been in these streets. And some of us have contracted it. God healed us. Some of us, you hadn't even had to deal with it. He graced you until there was a vaccine. And then you come in God's house. at Because everywhere I go is God's house. You come in God's house and you want to pit a patter. You act like somebody's twisting your arm to praise God. You could have been in ICU on an incubator trying to get you to breathe in a coma. And you come in here and act like you should be going crazy. I should be saying, come. Calm down, calm down, calm down. And you say, overseer, God's been so good to me. I want to act dignified, but I just can't help myself when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And I could have been dead. How in the world can I come in here and not praise?
praise him like I'm losing my mind. Somebody ought to praise him. When they act as a sedity. Come on, come on, Zephanie, they acting like they ain't got no reason to praise him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They acting like they ain't got no reason to praise him. Just look at somebody. He said, he's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Let me, let me. I know one thing. They sure praising him on Facebook. They praising him in their house. Come on, if y'all here, if y'all praising him in your house on Facebook, let me see you praise God real quick. Come on, let's show the live ones how to do it. Come on, they're going crazy. He, somebody hollered, he's been good, he's been good, he's been good, he's been good. Elder, elder elect, watch your tone. I hear you in the back, watch your tone. Tell somebody, you just don't know, you just... I can't even, I ain't even got, Sister Dad said, I ain't even got time to explain to you how good. I know he's been good to the Romans. I ain't got no, you know, and we don't say nothing else. We, we never, how you doing, Dom? We, I, if I ain't got nothing else to praise about, I just, how you doing, Dom? If I ain't got no reason, how you doing, Dom? You all right? If I ain't got no reason, I got, sometimes you got to show people how to. Okay, Romans, I didn't know if you was here. Now. I. See, the thing is, when God tells me something and then God does it, don't you look at me funny when I act crazy. Don't you look at me funny when I praise it because you were praying against me. You didn't care whether it happened for me or not. And God did it for me. Look at somebody and say, hold my mule. Hold, hold, hold my mule. Hold my mule. Hold my mule. Because I feel a praise right here. I, I just feel a praise. I feel a I feel a praise creeping up. Tell somebody, wait, give me some room. I, I know I got some room, but I need more room because I just feel a shout getting ready. I don't I don't have no help. I, I just Y'all excuse us. I, there have been some miracles here at Life Changers. There's been some prophetic fulfillment here at Life Changers. So you can act all dignified and act all sanctimonious. But there's some of us that understand that the Lord has made. All right, we're going we gonna to move. We're going to move. We're going to move. Kiana, behave yourself. Sister Nicole, don't do it. Oh my, not not shy. Oh my. Okay, we gotta move. We gotta move. We gotta. Zephy, I dare you. I dare you to praise him in the house. I dare you to praise him in the house. I dare you. I dare you to praise him. I'm gonna give y'all 30 seconds. I'm gonna give y'all 30. Elder, let sit down. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give y'all 30. If y'all see First Lady praising him, y'all ought to. All right, Sister Dancy, don't do that. Oh. Y'all need to stop. I don't know why y'all letting First Lady praise him by herself. I don't know why y'all, Brother Juan, don't you do it today. Sister Rachel, you know I go crazy when you start praising him. I'm gonna give y'all about two more minutes, and then we gotta move, y'all. All right. We gotta move. Pastor Tracy, I wish we was in Brooklyn right now. We got to move. Rachel, behave yourself. We got to move. We got to move. That's it right there. Shirella, I thought she was finished. I thought she was I thought she was finished. Shirella, I thought she was all right, we gotta. All right. Oh. I'm taking it 
If y'all ain't want to pray, we got to move. We got to move. God say, don't you suck. Come up, come shot. We just praising him. We gonna preach in a few minutes. But when we think, we, when we think of a good thing, oh, we gotta move. We gotta move. Why y'all starting? I see the flippers. I see the flippers are praising him. Mother flipping, they're praising. The Romans are praising him. Oh my, 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 shot. All right. Oh. Oh. All right, we're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're baba nansha. We're baba oshia. We're moving. We're moving. He's just been good to us. He's been good to me. He's good. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's just been good to me. I don't know about nobody else, but he's just, he's just been good. That's what I want to hear right there. He's been. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. I feel like praising him in here. Y'all have to excuse me, but God's been good. When I see God's miracles come through in the life of the believers, I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to give him some praise. Oh, I wish somebody would praise God with me right here. I wish he would. I wish he would praise him with me right here. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for everything that God is doing. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, sometimes you get too comfortable and you forget how good God's been. Look at somebody and say, don't get too comfortable. We forget, elder, we forget how good God's been. We forget. We forget. Complacent. We, we, get, we get familiar with God as if we're not supposed to give him deference. He's God and God alone. Isn't it something? He doesn't even need help being God. All of these other idols had to be built by man. If man didn't build them, they wouldn't be erected. But God says, I'm in time, out of time. I'm around time. I am time. I can come in and out of time anytime I want to. Who may be? I just am. When did you begin? I just am. When did you end? I just am. I have no beginning and I have no end. I'm God and I'm God alone. Somebody ought to praise him. That's the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to bless the Lord in our giving today. Amen. Come on, make some noise. Turn that up for me. Hallelujah. We want to bless the Lord in our giving. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Somebody said, Sister Bryn said, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Have I got one witness? He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Hallelujah. We want to bless the Lord today. Amen. Amen. All the tithers are in the building online. Amen. All the tithers online. Can you make some noise for the tithers online? Amen. Thank God for our Chattanooga, Chattanooga uh, contingent, our Washington, Virginia, our New York contingent. Amen. All of those that are in Birmingham, Alabama, those that are in Atlanta, we thank God. God is doing some great things. Amen. Amen. We're coming to Chattahoochee very soon. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're coming there very, very soon. Amen. 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 Chattanooga, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking about the river. Amen. 
be coming to Chattanooga very, very soon. Amen. Amen. I must want to get on the boat. Amen. Amen. And just ride down the Chattahoochee. Amen. Hallelujah. We're coming to Chattanooga real soon. Amen. Amen. Sister Zephany said he's been beyond good. I need to preach that. Amen. Amen. Good does not even identify how he is to us. Amen. And so we thank God. Amen. Well, I guess we'll have to come on over to Washington, Virginia, and amen, be live there. Amen. Amen. We have to go to these different places, those that are supporting the ministry. Thank God for you, all of you that are online. All right. Listen, the tithers are ready. Amen. The givers are ready. The sowers are ready. Amen. I ask that you prepare that. I think they've given out the envelopes for those. Even my eight-year-old is sowing today. Amen. Amen. He says, the Lord has blessed me, and I'm going to give him a tenth of whatever God gave me. Amen. I'm a tither. Amen. We teach tithing in the house, in the Myers house, in Life Changers. Amen. Tithing is not paying a bill. Tithing is a form of worship. Amen. Let me say this before I move on. I want to celebrate all of our tithers and our sowers. You have been giving like you've never given before. Amen. The Lord has been blessing. Amen. Amen. And instead of losing, we're gaining. Amen. 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 Some churches are closing up and we're looking to expand. Amen. Amen. I can tell you this right now. A tithing church will never close. I don't have no help. A tithing church will never close. Amen. The people of God will take care of God's house. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this is first Sunday. We know what we do on first Sunday. Amen. We know what we do on first Sunday in the name of Jesus. Thank God for our Overseer Morrison being with us live, amen, on Facebook, amen, amen, amen. I should have pulled him in and said, you preaching today, amen, amen, amen. Thank God for our sister Tracy, amen. McCree is on there. That's our sister in the Lord, amen, praying for her son, that God will continue to bless him in the athletic uh, ventures of his life, amen. Tracy, we love you and we're praying for you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of this. Lexus, I see you on. God bless you. All right, those that are sowing, amen. I'm sowing a hundred dollar seed today. I feel like giving God some money. Y'all too quiet. Y'all supposed to go crazy over that kind of stuff. Come on. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Wealthy people ain't quiet when it comes to giving to God. Amen. Any wealthy people in here? Just just a few. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to bless the Lord with a $100 seed today. Amen. I'm blessing with this $100 seed. I need at least at least 20 of you to follow me today with that $100 seed. If you don't have it, then God knows you don't have it. I don't have no help here. Amen. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Amen. But if you have it and you said, you know what? Giving unto God is not a big deal to me. It's my delight. I need 20. I need 19 because I'll make 20. I need 19 of you say, listen, I believe God enough. I know I got some bills to pay. I know I got some things waiting for me. But I believe God. Can I ask you this question? Have he's been, has he been supplying for you? Y'all too quiet. I said, has he been a provider? Yes. Amen. When you know that, I like that. Who did that yelling like that? Amen. 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 I knew it was somebody blessed. If he has been a provider for you, you do not get nervous over money. Come on, y'all ain't talking. I'm preaching hard already. People say to me, why, why do you give like that? How do you do it? I said, well, do you see how I live? I live because of God. I, I have because of God. He supplies my needs. And if he supplies my needs, what am I worried about money for? He's got it. How many know God's got it? Amen. So I just need 19 of you that will be in covenant with me today. Be in covenant and we're going to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Amen. There's another one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's another one. Amen. Even ushers and greeters are sowing. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. I know you're out there. Amen. They've already put up the giving information. Amen. 
Amen. They've already, I believe they've already put up the given information. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. We thank you. All right, lift those gifts unto the Lord. Amen. I don't take a long time when it comes to sowing. Amen. There's, this is a blessed house. Amen. This is a blessed online house. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for every tither in the house, that there are no thieves and life changers. We thank you for every seed sower. We have because we give, and we give because we have. Now, God, I ask that you bless them. Show yourself faithful. Show yourself mighty. Bless them, Lord, today, not because they have a $100 seed, because they have a $10 seed, but because their heart is in the right place. They had a heart of giving. I ask that you bless them, Lord, to show them again that you are their supplier. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to meet the need this week. I'm going to meet the need this week. I'm going to give you favor. There's three of you. God says, I'm going to give you an extension. I'm going to push it back. I believe God. And I thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. And I'll praise you in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise for everything God is doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. They're, they're collecting those seeds. Amen. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointed. Oh, God. Y'all y'all can't see it, but they're going crazy on, on Facebook Live. Focus praising them. Amen. Fresh anointing. It's coming my way, season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. One more time. Hey, it's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming my way. Season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. Oh, it's a new season. How many of y'all believe that? It's a new day. Hey, 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 hey. Say it's coming my way. Season of and prosperity. Oh, it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Oh, one more time. It's a new season. It's a new season. Say it again. It's a new season. Coming. Coming to me. Come on, let's give God some praise. My God. My God. They're sowing online. They're sowing. They're sowing. They're sowing. My God. They're sowing. They're sowing. Hey, man. When it's God, it's not a struggle. Amen, amen. Pastor Tracy, our executive pastor, wants you to be reminded, amen, that we have Clubhouse Prayer on Wednesday. Amen, at, amen, at 12 noon, Club, Clubhouse Prayer, amen. Uh, we will post it on my page and uh, Life Changes page, the information, so you can be a part of the Clubhouse Prayer on Wednesday, amen. So we thank God. Life changes is praying. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our men are getting more involved in prayer, and we want to thank them for that. Amen. 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 Before I go forth in the word, I want to thank God for all of our uh, um, audio and visual team. Amen. 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 Um, Listen, our young men, our young men, amen. Thank God for our musicians, 
Amen. Amen. But I want to talk about the audio and visual team real quickly. Amen. Our brother Frank, which is over the whole thing, was out of town on assignment with the family. And our brother Juan was not feeling well, did not even expect him to be here today. He is here. But those young men got there early, got the equipment in different vehicles, got it set up, and they were ready to go, to go live, to serve God's people. And I want to especially shout out my brother, uh, uh, my son, uh, DJ, is not feeling well. That's why he's not here. He came early to help set up and then went back home. Amen. Because he was under the weather, but he still came out. Amen. And can we give God a praise for them? Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of our auxiliary workers. Thank God for our executive board. Thank God for our elder designate. Thank God for our chief adjutants. Amen. Thank God for our ushers and greeters. Amen. They make this thing happen when you're in the sanctuary. They keep you safe. Amen. Amen. And so they attend to their leader, and we thank God for servanthood. Amen. Can we give God praise for servants? Amen. 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 And my daughter, we want to thank God for her leading praise and worship. Amen. She said to me the other day while I was working, she said, Dad, I, I need to go to New York to celebrate uh, a family member, and I wanted to spend some time with them, and uh, would you go half with me on the plane ticket? And I said, you know what? You serve life changers. You serve your daddy, and you don't get anything. You don't ask for anything. I said, it'd be my pleasure. It would be my pleasure to just go ahead and pay for the plane ticket because everybody needs somebody to sow into. Can we give God praise for our sister, Danae? Amen. She puts the music together. She works with the musician. She's always in her place. Can we praise God? Everybody needs to be appreciated. Amen. Ten years. Come on, y'all too quiet for me. Amen. Amen. Elder Designate, she's been doing praise and worship for the church for 10 years. 10 years from a teenager. Shy. But answered the call. And I can't say thank you to my daughter enough. Some have come and gone. She's still here. She's still got her daddy's back. She still served God's people. And sometimes, even though your family members and your family, Sister Dancy, you got to say, I appreciate you. And so I want to officially say, I appreciate you for all you're doing. And I'm going to give you some money for your trip. Amen. And so... You know, if you appreciate me, you can slide something in my hand. Amen? Old folks say, say hey, old mothers say, hold on, baby, I got something for you. Hold on, just hold, turn around here. Let me see what I'm working with here. Let me see here. I got a couple of, couple of yeah, out of the bosoms. I got a couple of dollars for you. Don't spill it. Spend it everywhere. Amen? Ice cream money. Amen. 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 I'm being honest with you. Sister Lorna still do that to me. Here, here's a little ice cream money. I said, what in the world? Amen. I sent you a little, a little lunch money. I sent you. I said, how old is this, the Lord? I said, here, baby, I sent you this, Reverend. Amen. And so we thank God for everything. Amen. We thank God for all of you. All right. Amen. Thank you all for still hanging with me. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our uh, executive pastor. She's going on a little mini vacation on tomorrow uh, she'll be in Las Vegas and uh, uh, where the sinners are winners amen <laughs> just joking just joking <laughs> amen <laughs> somebody said win first lady win and so amen right let's pray the Lord keeper amen amongst the temptation amen and how can we sing in a strange land amen and so we uh, thank God for her. Listen, listen, let me say this, and I'm not going to be long today. I just want to share these things, though. When you do ministry, 
You need to get away as much as you can. And especially leaders. Leaders that do not get a lot of vacations are usually burnt out on and ill-effective. Because if you give out so much and you do not replenish what you're doing, you're giving out on empty. And so we think she deserves this and more. Amen. We know she has a 50th celebration coming up, and we are going to really bless her uh, in an incredible way. You only have 50 one time. Amen. And so we want to really bless her. If this is in July, I'll be coming to you, those that support us, uh, either live or virtual. We want to really bless our executive pastor. Amen. She teaches every Tuesday night. Amen. Without fail. Sick. Amen. Frustrated. Amen. Tired. She still teaches. Are we appreciative of her efforts? Can we give God praise for her? <laughs> Amen. I'm going to call on her again. Can you give her a mic? I need you to read something for me. You have your paper Bible? Amen. She's paper Bible safe. Amen. 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 I need her to just walk through this real quickly with me. Amen. They're still thanking God for our uh, executive pastor on Facebook. Amen. Thank God for my mom. Amen. Amen. Monica Anna on the line. Amen. Amen. Bishop Reed is on the line. Can we give God for praise for him? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> he stood in gap for me the other day and preached himself crazy. Amen. 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 I said, you've got to be tired. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God for her. Listen, I want you to go with me. I believe that the Lord has given me a timely word uh, in this time. And we thank the Lord for what God has to say to the people. I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. I want to start at the first verse. Again, 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, and the first verse, amen, 1 Samuel, and what we're going to do, amen, we're going to start there, and uh, I'll tell you where I want you to stop, Pastor Tracy, amen? All right, are you ready? Amen. All oh, y'all got your Bibles out, amen? 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, 1 Samuel, musicians, y'all get some Bibles, Amen. Ain't going to learn the word, now they reading it. Amen. 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 We want everyone empowered. Amen. Amen. Brother Talib, stay with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Trace, is your mic on? Yes, yes. All right, turn her up a little more. Amen. Amen. You know how she read. Amen. Be ready. Amen. All right, Pastor Tracy. Yes, sir. Amen. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Malachites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire mm -hmm. and had taken the women captives mm -hmm. that were therein. They slew not any. They what? They slew not any. I want you to underline that, those of you that are writing, underline that. Go ahead. Either great or small, mm -hmm. but carried them away and went on their way. Mm -hmm. So David and his men came to the city. All right. And behold, it was burned with fire. Mm -hmm. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Okay. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, mm -hmm. because the soul of all the people was grieved. 
every man for his sons and for his daughters. Mm -hmm. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought him thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. And Father, we thank you for the word. We bless you now as he plays softly. We bless you, Lord. For your word we bless you for the power and demonstration of your power we give you glory in Jesus name use me for your service anoint your people to hear and receive the revelation you've given me in Jesus name thus far in the scripture if I was to use for a subject today my subject would be it is time to recover it's time to recover some of y'all that are live you need to say that it's time to recover look at somebody and say it's time to recover I began to inquire of the Lord as to what to tell the people on today. And the Lord took me to this scripture because it is the scripture that will remind you that whatever you're going through right now, whatever you've lost, you <clears throat> shall recover. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who this is for. But I know what the Lord said to tell you is that you shall recover. Come on, point to yourself and say, I shall recover. Sometimes you've got to prophesy to yourself and say, regardless of what I've been through, how bad it's been, I shall recover. I uh, I'm, I'm looking. It's been a year. And we have, because we've experienced so much loss. <clears throat> Sister Dancy, everywhere you look, there's been loss. In every area of our life, there have been loss. It's to the point where all we talk about is loss. We've lost family members. We've lost job associates. We've lost businesses. We've lost money. Come on in here. We have even lost relationships. And some of us almost lost our mind. Or oh, I'm just talking to some real people. Uh, uh, depression is at its highest point that it's ever been. All ages. Young children committing suicide. Teenagers committing suicide. Young adults committing suicide. Elderly committing suicide because they feel like there is no hope. I've lost so much, I might as well just take my own life because this whole year, all I've experienced is loss. And it wasn't just gradual loss. It was a sudden loss. There is definitely a difference when you have a loved one that you know that in a short while because of sickness they will expire. 
but then to get a phone call that a family member has had a sudden heart attack. Come on, come on. That has been in a car accident and their lives have been taken suddenly when you just talked to them this morning and this afternoon they're gone. It is a difference between gradual loss and sudden loss. Gradual loss. I, I've got time to, I feel the Holy Ghost. I've got time to get my spirit right. I've got time to get my mind right. I've got time to condition myself and gird up my lawns and get myself prepared for the inevitable. I can kind of get it together. I don't like it, but at least I'm graced enough time to prepare for what's getting ready to happen to me. But then there's, I'm laughing and joking with you. And then a couple of hours later, somebody's calling saying, I'll never see you again. Oh, people have, uh, uh, women, uh, the young lady, uh, in, I think it's Indianapolis, uh, the mother said the son was going to do something to the, at the store or something. He gets pulled over. And because he had a minor warrant, a bench warrant, because of a tra traffic violation, uh, he gets scared and he begins to jump in the car and run. And the officer takes his life in a matter of seconds. The mother just talked to him, just experienced him, said, I'll see you when you get back, never knowing that he would never come back again. Devastated. I've got to take my time with this. I've got to take my time because I don't care how saved you are, Sister Nicole, there are things that can devastate you that can rock your world. Have I got one witness in here? Oh, you, you think I'm just talking from my Bible. I'm talking from experience. I, had, I just lost my mother a year ago. I had time to kind of, people ask me, why you ain't cried and what's the problem? And, and I said, no, it's not that I don't want to cry, but I got so prepared. I done had so many conversations with God about my mother and asking him what he want to do and how he want to do it. Once he told me how he was going to do it, I had time to get myself together. But then there's days when I think about, I was coming back from Virginia. I had just talked to my brother before I left that Friday. And I'm coming back to Virginia, from Virginia on Sunday, and I'm, Brother Juan, I'm trying to get my mother. And, 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 and she's not answering the phone. It's not like my mother. I know her routine. Don't some of y'all know the routine of the people you live with? It's Sunday evening, and my mother's back from church from probably three services. But, 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 but you know, because she's Pentecostal for real. See, you ain't real Pentecostal if you ain't go to three or four services on Sunday. I don't have... And so she, she's not answering the phone. I'm just giving her a courtesy call. And, and, and I know I'm already scheduled to meet with my brother on Monday because we're getting ready to do some stuff that we probably had no business doing. And nobody's answering the phone. So I start calling around because I know something is wrong. And I call another pastor and I say, my mother's not answering the phone. Can somebody check? They said, no, your mother's fine. It's your brother. I said, what happened to him? He said, your brother's dead. He's been shot. The shock of it, I didn't know what to do. By the time I got to New York, I was running through red lights. I was trying to get there. And when I got to the train station, I run down the train station, police everywhere. And I see him lying there dead on the subway ground. I don't even know how, I don't know if some of you had this experience, uh, uh, I don't know how to even put it together. I see it, but I think I'm in shock. Because there are tragedies in your life that can shake you so bad that your mind cannot catch up with your experience. There's times in your life that you cannot use intellect to, to deal with travesty and tragedy and 
so I get through that. I get through that, so I thank you. And then some years ago, my sister-in-law is down in the basement. And this is a regular day. She had the basement apartment with her children, and we all was just one big, big family. It was just everybody eat at the same time. Am I right, Pastor Tracy? Everybody eat. You know, my sister-in-law cook. Pastor Tracy cook. I cook. The kids cook. Everybody cook. It's everything. Everybody use the same laundry. Everybody use the same detergent. Everybody use everything. Everything is fine. The kids go to school, come back, and buy eat. We all watch TV. We got everything. We've got a, we've got a system in the house. And then my nephew says, something is wrong. My mother can't breathe. And within, now watch this, within 10 minutes, all Hades has broken loose in my house. The house was calm, Sister Dancy. But within 10 minutes, my wife, my children, myself, my nephew, my niece, we're all going crazy. And my sister-in-law is fighting for her life. We grab the van. I snatch her up. I physically pick her up. And I'm running her through the side door of the house, getting her in the van. We're all jumping in the van. And we're driving. We're running, driving so fast that we pass the ambulance. We turn around. And take her back. And about time we turned her around, she had taken her last breath. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't, I don't. My daughter's arms, I'm holding her. My daughter's holding her. We don't know what to do because she was just fine 15 minutes ago. Everybody's going crazy. People coming over, they're going crazy. Don't, nobody knows what's going on. Everybody's, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, everybody's trying to get in town. We, she's in the hospital now on the machine. We don't know what happened. We don't know how this could happen. My wife is about to have a nervous breakdown because she cannot understand how God could let this happen and have it so quickly. We didn't even have time to prepare. Look at your neighbor says, time to recover. We look at David, we understand David, here this young man, the Bible says that David is anointed king while he is yet picking up sheep dung in the fields. He goes from a young man that is overlooked by his father because he was willing to do the dirty work. The Bible says that he was overlooked by the prophet because he didn't fit the bill. How many of y'all right now people overlooked you because you didn't fit the bill? I don't have no help in here. There, how, many, how, many, how many of you ever had people size you up and they're not what you think of the prototype of what it is that you are not and they overlook you because you're not what they think you should but they didn't realize that I am who God said I am. I don't have no help. You need to wave at somebody and say I am who God say I am. Can I tell you this as a side note? Everything that you need, God has already put it in you, and he's going to put somebody in your life to take you to the next level. And so the Bible says with David, the Bible says that he's anointed king by Samuel. He's anointed king. And he's anointed king, but he's not king yet. Can I say this to you? Everything you're going to be, God has already called you. You're just not walking in it yet. I want you to know, sisters and brothers, you don't get ready. You don't, you don't do it when you become it. You get ready before you become it. You don't just get disciplined when you get big. You've got to have discipline when nobody know you. Oh, it's quiet. They, all of them just left me right there. You don't start praying when you get a position. You start praying before you get the position. You pray before you get the position so you'll know how to pray so you can keep the position. And so with the time I have left, the Bible says that David excels. He, 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 he stumbles over a, 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 a level of elevation. What do you mean? The Bible says that his father sends him to his brothers while they're fighting, uh, uh, when they're, while they're fighting a man called Goliath. The brothers are fighting the Goliath, and the father says, take this food to him. 
Goliath is calling out all of his so-called people that fit the bill, but all of them, all of the Israelites are scared to fight Goliath because he is something that they have never seen before. They've, they're used to fighting people at their level, the same size that they are, but now they have a giant that they've never fought before, and now this is where the rubber meets the road. There's a lot of people acting like they got so much God. There's a lot of people acting like they're so saved. But let a giant come in your life. You'll really see what you got in God when something hits you that you've never been hit with before in your life. You really see how saved you are, Brother Antonio. When you've got to deal with some relationship issues, when you've got to deal with some financial issues, you ever had a bill you got to meet and you ain't got the money to meet it? And I don't know about some of y'all, but sometimes when you can't meet those, me, those needs, it make your attitude bad. You don't want nobody to talk to you. You don't want to, you don't want to pray with nobody. Oh, oh, okay. You don't want no, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, they starting something here. I wish y'all could be here. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says that he, he brings the food to live to his brothers. Watch this. Tell somebody there's a king in me. Tell somebody there's a queen in me. Let me tell you something. If it's inside of you, something in your life is going to take place that brings it forward. Oh, my God. Oh, it just takes the right. Come on. Everybody shot. It just takes the right thing to bring the king and queen out of you, to bring it out of you. And you don't even know how it happened. It just took as Somebody said, it just happens. No, no, no. Let me, let me finish here. Let me finish here. The Bible says that he's bringing food. He's bringing food to his brothers and sisters. He has no intention on dealing with what's going on. He doesn't even know about what's going on because he's on his assignment. That's another message. Me and Pastor Tracy will work on that. Stop worrying about somebody else's assignment and master yours. Hello. Why you keep worrying about what I'm doing? You, they made you the assignment security. You, you want to know everything I'm doing. But watch this. You want to know everything I'm doing, but you can't master what you're doing. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says that he's bringing the food. He brings the brothers the food. And then something clicks in him. He says, hold on. Y'all don't see this guy out here on the top of this mountain calling y'all punks? calling y'all blood. I don't have no help. He, he's disrespecting our God. Watch this. David says, do we not serve the same God? Yeah. Pastor Tracy, how could y'all let him talk about God like this? I'm not even a soldier, but I'm already have a, I, I got a righteous indignation towards this man because he's talking about my God. Does he not know? God help me. Does he not know that when I was in the field, a, a lion came up on my sheep and I took him down? Does he not know a bear came to mess with my sheep and God gave me supernatural power and I took him down? Does he not know that God will make a way out of no way does he not know that he's been my shelter and my shield does he not know that he will make this way for me when it seems impossible does he not know he is a protector and a provider and a way maker and a will in the middle of the will does he not know that God is the greatest power and he shall not be defeated does he not know The Bible says that he says, hey, 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 the king says, put this garment on. He says, no, I can't put this armor on because this armor, I haven't worked for this armor. I, I, I'm not built for this armor. I got my own anointing. God, that's another message. I got my own anointing. I got to work in my own anointing. What works for Brother Juan I'm, may not work for Brother Talib. I got to operate, Sister, Sister, Sister Nicole. She prays. I may have the. She got the anointing of prayer, but I may have the the anointing of hospitality. I got to work in what God gave me. The Bible says. The Bible says that he gets to. The sling and the rocks. And the giant says, you going to beat me with that? 
He said, yeah, in the name of our Lord, I'm getting ready to kill you. And he's laughing, and he says, okay, keep on laughing, devil. While you're laughing, I'm preparing. While you're laughing, I've got a strategy. While you're laughing, I'm getting ready to take this rock, and the rock is going to hit you in the head, and you're going to die, and I'm going to cut your head off, and I'm going to show my oppressors and the enemies of God that no weapon formed against us <laughs> will prosper. And the Bible says he kills Goliath. He kills this giant. And then the Bible says that now uh, uh, he's getting accolades. Are you with me? He's getting accolades. He, he's getting so many accolades that they're now saying he's a little older now. They're now saying Saul, the king, killed the thousand, but David killed ten thousand. Uh-huh, he's getting some accolades now. He's learning, he's learned how to fight now. He's understanding war. He's got some props. He, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he notoriety. But what happens is the king gets so upset because the king don't like the fact that he's getting more praise than the king. And then the Bible says that the king turns on him. And then he has to run from his life. But what happens is when he runs for his life, he runs into a cave and he runs into a situation where he runs into some misfits that were rejected. And at the end, this is stayed along, making a long story short, he, 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 they decide to make him the leader. And so now who he was fighting for, you'll read in the Bible, he begins to fight against. And then the Bible says, this is where I want to go right here. The Bible says that while he's fighting, an invading army comes in to Ziglag, the place, the place of pressing. Whenever you're going to have a situation, God's going to allow you to be pressed. Well, I ain't have no help in here. You need to stop complaining about the press in your life. Because every one of us, if you live in God long enough, you're going to have a zigzag experience. You're going to have, watch this. When I looked it up, Pastor Tracy, I noticed that zigzag was located in the place of Judah in the regions of Judah, in Israel. It was a place, it was located in a place of praise. Can I say this? When the, de the devil comes against you, he'll, tell, he'll try to suppress your praise. You ever, you, you ever, you can have so much praise and a situation to happen in your life and it will devastate you and try to take your praise. And the Bible says, the Bible says that, now, now stay with me, I'm almost done. The Bible says that he is, he is, he is, he is, uh, he is, he is fighting. And then the Bible says, Sister Nicole, that while they're fighting, his army of 600 are fighting. The Bible says that the warring army comes in and they burn up where these men where their family is. Are you with me? And they burn up all of their houses. But there was a part where I told you to underline. Are you with me? The Bible says that they took everything from them. But watch this, Brother Juan. They did not kill it. They, they took the wives. They took the daughters. They took the sons. They took the livestock. But they did not kill them. I need you to get this. There are some things that you've lost in your life that you are devastated. God allowed you to lose it, but he didn't allow it to be killed. So I got a question. If God did not allow it to be killed, then why would he save it? Can I tell you, there are some things in your life God allowed to be taken away for at the proper time, he's going to give it back to you. Amen. Watch this. The Bible says that David is so distraught. His men come back from war and now they're so mad and devastated, they want to kill David. Huh. 
Sometimes people that are with you can get so mad that they want to kill you, the same people that were with you. Wow. Tragedy can make people turn. Do you not know that there are so many husbands and wives, when they lose a child, they get divorced? If I had some time, I would have got the statistics for you, but I'll have it for you next time. Watch this. That the husband and wife get so mad at each other because they don't know how to handle their grief, they begin to blame each other for the loss. So they get so upset that they say, it's your fault. It's your fault that this has happened to us. And so David now, he's saying, man, I done lost my wife and kids. They done lost that now. The people want to kill me. And somebody said, well, pastor, how do I recover? Because some of you right now, you haven't recovered because you don't know how. Some of you right now, you're in depression because you don't know how to get out of it. But the Bible says the first thing David did, he inquired of the Lord. If you ever want to get out of and ever want to recover the first thing you got to do is you've got to inquire of the Lord. You've got to pray unto your God. The first thing you got to do is pray. And then after you pray, the next thing you got to do is, what do you want me to do? We pray to him, and now while you're praying, you got to say, Lord, what is it, Sharilla? what is it, Lord, that you want me to do? Watch this, watch this, and I'm almost done. There's some things, before you make a move in your emotions, you got to seek God in your spirit. Okay, some of y'all missed that right there. Before you move in your emotions, you've got to move in the spirit. The Bible says that he asked God a question. Shall I pursue them or shall I leave it alone? He says, pursue them because you shall recover it all. Can I say this to you? I'm telling you today that if God says pursue it, then that means it's not over. Oh, I wish I had. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I need you to tell somebody it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. I need you to prophesy to somebody. Look at somebody and say, it's not over. Watch this. Watch this. It said, it's not over. Watch this. He says, when he had 600. Sister Nicole, this is what got me. The 600 when they got to the river to cross over the river to go fight, 200 said, I'm too wore out to even fight anybody. Can I say this? Shirella, there's going to be some people you're going to have to leave behind when God tells you to pursue what he has for you. Okay, I ain't got no help. I ain't got no help. Y'all left me right there. There's some, see, you so tied into them, you won't emotionally, come on, you don't got so spiritually attacked that you keep wanting to deal with these people. But there are some people in your life, you've got to say, at this juncture in my life, you have worn me out so much. You're so messed up that what God has for me is on the other side. And I cannot stay here in this place with you. Because if I stay here with you, I'll never recover what the enemy took from me I'll never get back what he stole from me he didn't have permission he stole it illegally but God said I am the spiritual police I'm going back to take back everything the enemy took from me and if you don't want to go get yours don't hinder me I ain't got time to wait for you I ain't got time to negotiate with you I ain't got time to try to get you and convince you I'm going look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm going for mine 
or I ain't got no help in here, but you need to tell your neighbor that I'm going for mine. I'm not letting anything stop me from getting what God had me. And then the Bible says that when David took his 400, look at your neighbor and said, work with what you got left. Work with what you got left. I feel God right here. Work with what you got left. I ain't got no help right here. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Work with what you got left. God says, I know you started out with 600 and 200 left you. 200 you thought you could depend on left you. 200 you thought had your back left you. 200 that lied to you and said, I'm with you. 200 couldn't handle the pressure and the uh, adversities of life at the reception of life they could not handle it and you said how are we going to win with less than what we had with it but I got a word for you the Lord said I'm getting ready to cause you to win with even less I'm causing you to get the victory with even less why in the world would you send me God to work with even less God I feel you right now why would you send me God to work work with even less he says I'm sending you with less because if you had more you'd get arrogant and you think it was you you would forget that it was not you if you had more you would think you had enough Talib give me some more on this mic if you had more you would rely on the ones that are around you if you had more you would have faith in man when the word says have no faith in man but believe in God and trust in God if you had more you would think you can do it just because of the numbers but I got a word for you God's getting ready to allow you to recover all of it even when you got less I had a house I lost a house you got friends and you lost friends you had money and you lost money you had family members and they ain't speaking to you but God said it doesn't matter who you lost who left you who lied on you who betrayed you Jesus had a Judas but he still did it come on in here the Bible says that he told him not only am I going to give you the victory but what I love about God that he gives you the victory y'all ain't talking back to me what I love about God is not only does he give you the victory over your enemies but he makes your enemies give you everything that he stole from you with interest look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that if you're going to play son I need you to play that tell your neighbors that I'm getting ready to get it all back but I'm getting it back with interest go find somebody and tell them with interest with interest everything that the enemy took from me God it's getting ready to give it back to me God it's getting ready to give me everything that I thought was lost take away my devastation and pastor Tracy she says this and I love to hear I got a word for you that the Lord is getting ready to give you beauty for your ashes everything every devastation that you've been through God is getting ready to turn your midnight into day God is about to make you the head and not the tail look at your neighbor and say God is turning it all 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 give it glory Somebody need to holler. I got to finish. I'm done. I'm telling you. You're getting ready to get it all back. It's time to recover. 
It's been a year, Pastor Tracy. It's been a year. How long, Nicole, are you going to sit on that bed by this pool and wait for somebody to put you in? Your problem is you think the power is in the pool. The power is in the person. And that person is Jesus. Jesus. He says, take up your bed and walk. How many of you today have made up in your mind, I've been in this place too long. I've stayed here too long. I know what happened. I almost lost it. But I thank God that he gave me my mind back. I don't have no help. Anybody in here on Facebook Live ever lost, almost lost it? I, in this year, you've experienced some stuff that made you want to walk away from God and everybody else. Can I get about two witnesses that will be real? They were so devastated. Because sometimes working for God, you can still be devastated. Some bad things do happen to good people. In this life, there'll be some tragedy. There'll be some discomfort. There'll be some disappointment. But how many know that he's not going to let it die? Bren, he's going to cause it to multiply. Cole, the Lord said, tell you, I'm getting ready to multiply you. Everything you lost, I'm getting ready to multiply. I'm giving you new. I dare somebody just lift their hands down if they believe that you're getting ready to go on the other side. You're getting ready to go on the other side. And not only, you, you're not going to ask for it, but you're getting ready to take it. The Bible says he took everything, got his wives back, his daughters back, his children back, his livestock, and then took theirs. And Pastor Tracy, they said when they got back on the other side, Brother Juan, people wanted to give the 200 a hard time, said, y'all can't have none of this, you ain't for it. David said, no, you got to show grace. Show them, I know you wasn't in the mental state to help me. But I'm better now so I can help you. I don't have no help. We got to help each other. Everybody's standing. I'm done. I pray that you were blessed today to know that it is time to recover. It's time to come out of it. It's time to be set free and delivered. Bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone here that's listening that don't know you as their personal savior. I pray now they will accept you today by opening their mouths and their heart and saying, Lord, I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross for me. I believe he died on the cross and on the third day he arose with all power and forgiveness in his hands. And I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that you are Lord, and I accept him into my life as my Savior. My sister and my brother, you are now born again. Don't you let no devil in hell tell you you're not. And Father, I thank you for those that have recovered. Continue to heal them. Continue to encourage them. Touch their mind and their emotions. And Father, we thank you today for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on next Sunday. Stay with God and walk in your recovery. God bless you.